computer. Okay, welcome back to Chemistry 2330. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and do one little more segment about chirality, which is chapter six, and then we're gonna break out into our group sessions and do our activity related to chirality. With chirality, it's all about getting that perspective and using that practice, and that's what that, uh, the activity's for, so you guys can work together as small groups to say, well, what about this, and what about this, and then having your student perspective might help you understand how to get uh, the correct answer more than not, okay? So, but first we have a little bit of administration. Uh, so if you haven't taken a mock exam, go ahead and take a mock exam. Uh, I have one open today and one open tomorrow. The one tomorrow is open from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. Uh, if you've already had it, took it and it worked, great. If you're nervous about it and you wanna take it again, go ahead, that's fine. Again, it's no points, it's just five questions just for you to test out your equipment. Uh, maybe you plan on taking the test at the library and you wanna use their Wi-Fi to make sure it's good enough. You know, go ahead and use those opportunities to do what you can. Uh, I think uh, Top Hat's been able to accommodate almost all questions so far, uh, as far as I can tell. So that means uh, things are going well, I hope. Uh, again, we have uh, today and tomorrow, I have two more mock exams just ready to go. And then we'll have a review on Monday and our exam will be during class time on Wednesday of next week. Okay, Wednesday of next week, do not come to Zoom class. Just immediately log in to Top Hat at 1230. The exam will be open at 1230. You'll have the entire class time to take it. And it'll be a multiple choice question test. And it'll have uh, 35 questions on it. I was just double checking that, 35 questions on it. And there'll all be multiple choice. And it'll be over chapters one through seven. Okay. So our, our, uh, our exam one will be over chapters one through seven, okay? And so what I'll do on the review is I will actually draw together the, uh, key, uh, some slides with the goals of those seven chapters and what to look for when you're studying. Again, our homework is due, um, uh, Chapter six homework is due midnight at Friday. After that time, you will be able to review all of your chapter six homework. Actually, you should be able to review all your homework from chapters one through seven. Use that as a good study guide to see what you got right and what you got wrong, and go ahead and continue to study for that uh, system. Okay, any questions about uh, what we're doing in class today or uh, the exam, mock exams, et cetera? Uh, Please, sorry. sorry, you go ahead. <laughs> well, I was just gonna ask, uh, the mock test that we have today, what time does it start? Does it start at two? Uh, it started at 12. I, I just, oh. you know, so you, you can take it right after the, uh, the, the group activity if you want. Okay, and if, and if I have a class right after this, will it still be open afterwards? It's open from 12 to six today and 8 okay. to 6 p.m. tomorrow. Yes, sir, thank you. That way, everybody has a chance to do it a couple times. Okay. Other question? Yeah, um, once we finish the group activity, are we coming back to class or we can just? No, once you finish the group activity, I need you to get a picture of your answers in some way or shape or form and upload them to Canvas. And we are not coming back to class. We will, I'll see you again on Monday for the review. Okay. Uh, professor? Yes. I have a question about homework chapter six. I was working on it. Uh huh. And uh, the second and the third one, it's a multiple choice. So it says A, B, C, D, and it doesn't have any answer next to A or B or C, D. Oh, really? Uh, can yeah. you give me the number? Uh, there should be a number on the top of that. It should say uh, H6.11. Not 11. Is it, does it say uh, one, two, or three? It's like it's giving you to pick an answer, but A, there is a blank, B, blank, C, blank, and D, blank. Oh, it might have pictures that didn't load right. So let me go ahead and look at that right after class, and I'll see if I can fix that. Thank you. Okay, uh, okay. Chapter six, question 
and point 14. And point 14. Yes. All right, thank you. I will look into that right after our Okay, you're welcome. Yeah. All right, uh, okay, so any other questions about that? Um, I have, oh, you go first, sorry. Do we get a grade for the mock exams? No grade for the mock exams. It's just to get you comfortable with the testing platform. Um, and I have a question about the group activity we're about to do. When you upload it on Canvas, uh, what file would you like us to upload it under? Or just our own personal file? Uh, no, there should be an assignment. Let me double check. There should be an assignment called group okay, gotcha. Under the assignments tab, uh, there is at the bottom, it's at the bottom of the page called group activity one. And it's do it by midnight tonight. Thank you. Uh, I will uh, randomly assign breakout rooms. So what we'll do is at the end, I'll go ahead and hit breakout rooms and you'll have an invite. And all you have to do is join that room and then go ahead and uh, I'll give you additional instructions about breakout rooms in a couple minutes. But let me go ahead and do one more thing about, uh, I wanted to look over prioritization again. And then I wanted to show you a second method for figuring out if you don't like the hand method, okay? So it said in our slides that you should go to um, chapter four for that prioritization rules, okay? And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull up the prioritization rules that are in chapter four, and I'm gonna go over them one more time, and then I'm going to go do a blank screen and uh, show you what I call the pinwheel method for deciding what's what. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen, and if you have questions, go ahead and um, put them in the chat there or ask. Let's see if I can't share. Oh, that looks good. All right. I'm gonna move the gallery view over here to this side. All right, so again, the priority rules for this are the exact same thing we used for E and Z. So you don't have to learn new priority rules. It's based on the atomic number, not mass, atomic number. The higher the atomic number, the higher the priority. So if you only had those simple ones, it was you can easily assign your highest priority to that. However, if you cannot sign that highest priority based on just the atom directly bonded to it, then you have to look at the set of atoms that is assigned next to it, okay? So in the case of uh, this one right here, okay, the set of atoms that it's bonded to are the three hydrogens, okay? And those three hydrogens all have a priority one. However, if the set of atoms contains something else, like this has two hydrogens and a carbon, now your carbon counts toward priority. So you're looking at if nothing, like let's say you have a methyl group and an ethyl group next to each other, because the ethyl group has that higher atomic number atom, the carbon, attached to that carbon, it's now higher priority than the methyl group, okay? And if the atom is of higher priority attached directly to that carbon, that now is a higher priority than even if it was attached to a carbon. So if we can look one bond over and find a higher element that's different from the two, from the our, our four different positions, we can assign priority here. However, if you can't assign priority there because you have a double bond or a carbonyl or something, we have a rule for that too, okay? And the rule for that is that if something is double bonded to something, it counts twice. Okay, so let's look at that. So in the case of here, this counts as bonded to one hydrogen and two carbons, okay? Because the first bond to carbon counts as a carbon in the set, the second bond to carbon counts as a carbon in the set. So that's why it would count as two carbons on our set with a hydrogen, and so you might be able to assign priority there. So if you had an ethyl group, and an ethylene group with this vinyl group on there, the ethylene group would take priority because it's bonded to carbon twice. That works the same if you have a carbonyl compound uh, because, and you are comparing it to an alcohol right here. Because the carbonyl counts as bonded to oxygen twice, you get to use that in your prioritization. Okay, 
So those are the three rules of prioritization. Most of the time, atomic number works, but if you can't do directly attached, you look at what's next. And so you assign that uh, grouping to each of the groups, and then once you figure out which one's highest priority between the set, you number them one to four, and then you go ahead and do your R and S assignment. All right, questions on these three rules for prioritization. So I think that you know this it makes it uh, pretty, um, it, there are only three simple rules so we can follow all the rules. And when we start doing the activity, you'll start to catch on and say, oh yeah, that makes sense, that makes sense, that makes sense. So we'll, do, we'll see that in the activity. Okay. Now the second thing I wanna do is I wanna show you what I call the pinwheel method. And this works for some people, but not everybody. So I wanted to do my hand one first. If you're comfortable with hand, you don't have to do pinwheel. If you're not comfortable with hand, go ahead and try pinwheel today. Okay, so let's draw a compound here. And I'm just gonna use uh, numbers right here for our prioritization here. Three, let's do that three, that uh, four, and that two. Okay, so in this configuration, what I would do is I would try to line up my fingers where the one, two, and three are and in this orientation, because the one and the two and the three are pointing in this direction. And then I turn it to myself and try to do the R and the S, okay? However, some people don't like that. So what we have is we have what we call the pinwheel method. And the idea is in your head or on paper, you rotate the number four position behind so you only see three things. So if we rotate this around, uh, about 90 degrees, what's gonna happen is this two is gonna come out and this three is gonna come over and that one is gonna stay in the same place. So we're gonna have one here and then we're gonna have two and then we're gonna have three. Notice we don't see four anymore because it's right behind us, okay? So now that we have it turned in this position, this is our pinwheel and we follow the exact same clockwise, counterclockwise rules. And so we have one, two, three, and that is counterclockwise making this S right here. Okay, so if I take this exact same example and swap two of the components, I can get the other isomer, and let's leave one here. Uh, let's put four here, and let's put two here, okay? So now the four is in front, so we have to do that same rotation, and it's easiest to rotate it around this way, and when we do that, the two comes this way and the three ends up over here. So if we rotate that, our three ends up in this position, our one never moved, and our two is swapped out to where the hydrogen was, the, our number four was, and we have this structure here. Now we apply our clockwise, counterclockwise, and we have one, two, three, that's clockwise, this is R. So this is what I call the pinwheel method. You have to, most of the time, you have to redraw it by rotating the lowest priority thing around. Now, let me show you one other rotation that will be sometimes necessary. Okay, so in this case, what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna do that exact same thing, and, but I'm gonna put the four here. One, two, three. So when we have the four in that axial position, what we do is we rotate the hydrogen back and the three, uh, and I'm sorry, the number four position back, and we turn that three up into that sticking up position. But the one and the two don't sh change positions because all we're doing is we're rotating it, the, the three and the four, so we get the hydrogen and back. And when we do that rotation, we end up with, three, one, and two, and now we can assign our priority based on clockwise or counterclockwise. This happens to be S because it's counterclockwise. Okay, let me show that again where we put that, that fourth position in somewhere else. Okay, I'm gonna show that four here, that two here, the three here, and the one here. In theory, because I only swapped two, that we should, when we do this rotation, come up with the other 
okay? Whenever you swap two uh, things in space, it changes the isomer from R to S or S to R. All right, so in this case right here, we have two options. We can either rotate it around to the back to get it in the back, or we can, um, we, no, actually that, yeah, because if we rotated this, yeah, we'd have to rotate that around. And if we rotated that around, our two would come forward, our one would come over here, and the three would stay in the same position because all, all we're doing is rotating the four. And we would end up with the one over here, the two here, and that three stays in that axial position. And we have one, two, three, and we end up with the R. Okay, so that's how to do the pinwheel work, okay? It's, in my mind, it, it, it's, some people really like it, but uh, I, I like the hand thing. So use whichever one you're comfortable with, and, but try to use only one or the other, not both. You don't want to get, you don't want to start mixing your methods. Okay, can you go over how to draw enantiomers again? Um, yes, because that's part of the activity. So let's do that on the next page. All right. So <clears throat> doesn't matter how complex the molecule is. When you draw your enantiomer, um, and I'm going to just start with it in this position here. Uh, let's do a CL. Let's do an OH. Let's do a... Um, uh, BR and put uh, a fluorine over here. Okay, so they're all different, right? And so we can easily watch them. So the key to drawing your enantiomer is to figure out where your um, uh, where your mirror is. The mirror is always outside on one side or the other. What I like to do is I like to draw my mirror on the side with the two things that are facing in and out. Okay, so this is out of the page and that's into the page. Mm -hmm. Uh, quickly, let's assign uh, R and S to this so that we can see it. Uh, let's see, the oxygen would be one, fluorine would be two, chlorine would be three, and bromine would be four. I'm sorry, that's backwards. <laughs> that's exactly backwards. Uh, oxygen would be four, four, three, two, one. So it is counterclockwise, so this is the S isomer. Okay. Now let's start from that mirror. And the first thing we wanna do is transfer this bromine over and keep its wedge, okay? The second thing we see is this hydrogen bonded to an oxygen and we're gonna keep its dashed wedge. Can I ask a question before you move on? Yes. Um, so you assigned S, so if you were doing the pinwheel method, mm -hmm. would you, if four is basically in the back already, so you'd just be looking at one, two, and three? Correct. Okay. Okay. Thank now, you. Or you can rotate it that, you know, the last 60 degrees and get that perfect pin. Okay. So Sorry, one more question. Um, maybe I'm looking at this wrong. So you did four, uh, four, three, two, one, and four, three, two, one is going counterclockwise, but one, two, three, four is going clockwise. Okay, so let's see. This is this is two. This is three. Sorry. So this is three. Sorry, yeah, I was looking at it wrong. So one, uh, this one looked like a two. That's why I, I did that. Sorry. So this is two because this is the heaviest. It's one. Next heaviest, two. Third heaviest, three. And our oxygen is four. So I have one, two, three. So I still have counterclockwise. Yes, yeah, sorry. The two looked like a th yeah. the I apologize. Okay, so let's continue on. So the next thing over is this carbon right here, which is represented here. So let's go ahead and draw the chlorine up above it. And then the last thing we have is our fluorine over here. Okay. So if you follow from the mirror out and keep the exact same you know, line structure that you had, you should get the correct thing. So let's assign priority to this one. This again is four three, two, one. And if we do our one, two, three, four, that's clockwise and it's R, okay? Now, a lot of times, if you, one thing, one trick you might wanna use is if you have a structure 
with like a long chain or something big and fluffy over here. You want to put <clears throat> something, you know, like your smaller, <laughs> excuse me, your smaller groups close together, uh, closer to the mirror, like this. And so you'll start with the simple thing, move these over like that. And then by the time you get to this last uh, bit here, you'll just know this entire group gets transferred to the other side. And so you just have to do that, okay? So if you have something with some big bulky group on it, put that big bulky group furthest away from the mirror and it's easier because this is the chiral center. That's the center you don't want to mess up. The rest of this is not as important in assigning your chiral center. Okay. Can I ask a question? Yes. For the first example on top, let's say um, if you had done the, the HO on the right side, if you had done that a solid wedge and you had done the bromide a dash wedge, would that make them um, still enantiomers? Um, you know what I'm saying? I don't know that was confusing. Okay. Well, okay. Um, so as it's drawn, these are enantiomers, right? Because yeah. one's R and one's S, okay? If I drew this one with this OH as the solid line and this BR as the negative, yes. as the dash, it would actually be this. Because if we take this right here and rotate it, um, take this OH group here and rotate it, in that direction, right? Such that it's where, so it's, if we rotate this OH, so it has that solid dash and the fluorine has this straight line right here. What we'll see here is, let's see. So we have our chlorine doesn't move because we're rotating. We're gonna rotate that OH until it has a solid dash. When it does this, that means the bromine is now transferred over here and is now the dashed wedge. And the fluorine is now over here and it's the line again. Okay. So this is the structure you said you wanted me to draw, which would be the enantiomer of the structure I did draw. Okay. Does that make sense? That does make sense. And so you see now that these three atoms line up and the only difference is the other two atoms have swapped. All we did was rotate this by uh, about 180 degrees. And that's how we get to that other structure. Okay? So, you know, it takes a little practice to see that, you know, and if you want to rotate it like 60 degrees and 60 degrees, just to make sure that you're drawing it correctly, that's a great practice for understanding chirality. I have a question about RNS. Okay. Um, so when you assign R and S and you're finding the chiral center, there has to be four different molecules around it. Like there can't be two hydrogens. Correct. You have to have four different things because if you have two of the same thing, they're going to be the same priority. Okay. So you can do it. So it. exercise, maybe the first thing you should do is say, are there four different things on there? If there aren't, it's a chiral. Got it, thank you. Professor, you said if there wasn't the four, you would consider a chiral as opposed to chiral because chiral has the four different ones in the carbon, correct? Correct, you have to have four different things attached to carbon to make it chiral. Yes, sir. So what I wanna do now is I wanna pull up the assignment and give you some instruction. Oh. Oh, it's on. I'm going to pull it up and give you some instructions on uh, what we're going to do here. So the what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up the one that's already on Canvas. Activity one. I'm going to share my screen, and I want to go ahead and give you some instructions for this. It. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so uh, if you can see my screen, I hope. Um, so you have all these compounds here, and the key here is you want to 
assign each of them as RNS, okay? So the idea here, the first thing you look for is, are there four different things? If there aren't, assign it a chiral, okay? Or leave the box blank in this case, okay? So the next thing you wanna do is assign priority to your different groups, okay? Then you use either the hand method or the pinwheel method to decide whether it's R or S, and you write R or S in the box, okay? If you don't have this printed out, go ahead and just put them in a grid pattern like you see here, four, four, and three on that piece of paper, and then that, uh, that'll show me that those are in those spatial positions, okay? Now, for the next part of the page right here, I want you to draw the enantiomer, okay? Now, you can do what I did, which was just draw the mirror and draw the enantiomer, or you can, for like group C here, part C here, you can actually put this largest group back behind first before you do it. You can do it either way, just do the same method for all of them, and that way you're more likely to get the correct enantiomer drawn. Okay. You do not have to assign the chirality to this, but if you wanted a little extra, uh, extra practice, you can go ahead and assign chirality to this, okay? So on the, um, on if you didn't have it printed up, you just want it on blank paper, just assign them A, B, and C, and then I'll know exactly which ones you were doing, okay? So after, oh, so the next thing that's gonna happen is I'm gonna assign you into our uh, breakout rooms. I'm gonna stop sharing right now. I'm gonna assign you to breakout rooms. What you should see pop up on your screen is to join a breakout room. These are randomly assigned. And so then we'll in, be in groups of, let's see, we have 54 of us, probably 10 groups of approximately five each. And then what I want you to do is go ahead and uh, introduce yourself, first name only if you want, that's fine. Uh, and I would like everybody to kind of, uh, you know, participate and saying, well, is it RS or, you know, what's the priority here? Hey, you know, what's the rule again? You know, go ahead and ask questions, be nice to each other. I want you to use this as kind of a low stress way of figuring it out, okay? And so you don't get frustrated because where do I do next? You can ask questions and say, well, okay, let's do this. And then there should be a little tab in that breakout room to um, ask me to join you and if you have a question or you can pop out, I'll be live monitoring here, and if you pop out of your, uh, your breakout room, I'll try to answer your question, and then you can pop back in, okay? Any questions about breakout rooms? No. Okay, so then after you're done with the assignment, either print it up or on blank paper, go ahead and take a picture or scan of it and upload it to Canvas. Uh, let me double check to make sure, yeah, it's already in Canvas. It's at the bottom of the assignments page, class activity one, okay? Okay, so let me go ahead and if there aren't any more questions, I will go ahead and break you out in your breakout rooms and then you have uh, the rest of the class period to get this done. Uh, if you have to run off early for some reason, go ahead and complete it yourself and upload it by midnight tonight. All right, if there are any, I'll start generating some breakout rooms. Uh, let's see, I'm gonna do 10 breakout rooms, so you should have about five to six participants per breakout room, okay? So there we go. I am opening all rooms. Did you get an invite to join a room? I don't think I did. Okay, let me, um, well, why not? Let's see. Uh, 
yeah, Holly, you got a breakout room uh, invite for number two, room two. I guess uh, I can't seem to find the, the box to get there. Okay. Uh, let me see if I can move you there. I found it. I okay. found it. Thank you. Sorry. No, no, no problem. 